Hi, my name's Kaylee, and this is uh, another Stitch With Me. It's been a while, and I thought I would work on bubbles and do some catching up. So I'm going to do my usual block stitching. Um, because I rarely mess up counting with this. So hopefully I don't shake this too much. Okay. So I cannot believe it is the end of July. The summer has evaporated. Condolences to anyone affected in Jasper. I guess everyone in Jasper is affected, but um, that is horrible. I feel it's like hard to brag about how amazing the summer's been here so far. I feel like I've hit that age also where like I appreciate every second of the summer because I'm well aware how soon snow will be here. And oh my garden is loving this weather as well. So I don't know how big it is in feet. It's big though. And I planted a bunch of tomatoes. We've already gotten a couple off them. And then I planted a good amount of onion and garlic. Oh, I planted strawberries too and basil. And then um, tons of broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, um, cabbage, just red cabbage. I like pickled red cabbage. And nasturtiums accidentally. I thought I was planting spinach. So a lot of nasturtiums. I know you can eat nasturtiums. They're <clears throat> is it just the flowers or leaves too? They're like a bit spicy. But I have not eaten any. And then um like more onion one fennel. Um a bunch more herbs. Pickling cucumbers and cantaloupe kind of just for fun. And there's like 40 flowers on this cantaloupe. I don't like, I sort of like cantaloupe, but I think many friends will be getting cantaloupes. So I can't wait to start harvesting. I know we're a little behind. I think we planted the first week of June. But that's okay. And also, I guess my dog and cat must like pee around it. Knock on wood. There has not been like damage. Because we have gotten a lot of rain and I've heard some people struggling with slugs. But my grandma used to kill her slugs with beer. Because I like go in the beer and drink it and get drunk and like drown in the beer, apparently. And eggshells. So I know that hack. And it's so funny where the tomatoes are <clears throat> in the garden. You know that? I'm sure it's called something. When you. Okay, so the tomato plants, like touching that part and smelling it, I get transported to my grandma's garden. Like when I was super young. It's so crazy how I totally see that when I have that smell. Not a tomato smell, like the tomato leaves and stem smell. My grandma had a gorgeous garden. Um, before she moved into the condo, she... Um... Okay, so she's British. And when she came to Canada, I don't know how long it took her to find the hobby. But she got into Ikinobo... Ikebana, Ikeb anyways, it's Japanese flower arranging. Something to do with like where you put the flowers, they follow lines. They're not like 
um, bouquets or anything like that. I think she always liked gardening. And then she happened to start growing things in the garden to do the flower arranging. I think that's the right way around that went. But her flowers were insanely gorgeous. And I knew she spent literally all day out in the garden maintaining it. But just how much work goes into weeding the garden at the moment is insane. And we haven't d dealt with any of the like flower part of the garden this year at all. My cousin's girlfriend, where she works, she was able to get some trees. We had been wanting trees, but not wanting to buy trees. So they're so expensive. <clears throat> so she just dropped off like 70 trees. We maybe a quarter, no, a little more than a quarter way finished planting them. Because it turns out planting trees is a ton of work. So, it's good. Now that's chalked off the list. We have a ton of trees. Veggie garden in place that does well where it is. Little by little. I don't know if I'll, you know, I used to say never garden. And now I'm loving the veggie. But I don't know if I'll ever get really into flower garden. My husband's allergic to, like, all flowers. So we can't even have them inside, so... But they're nice to look at. <clears throat> or I just have like a ton of hostas or something that's like no effort. My grandma had the most beautiful roses in this one area. Oh, it was crazy. I like roses actually. They would be cool. It's just she was part of this like Japanese cultural society and they go like around the world to do flower shows and stuff actually she became like a sensei so she'd do judges or was she a sensei this is okay my grandma she's amazing or she's amazing she's still alive she's 98 but she's very good at telling stories and she was fantastic but then like she also had the saying you know why spoil a good story with the truth so as i got i'm getting older i'm like okay is that actually what the story was, or I don't know, because you know I tell other family members or people the story, and they're like, "That's not how it happened." I'm like, ah, oh, the way she told it was so much better. Yeah, she went uh, this one time to South Africa, and they weren't in the house anymore. Uh, they were in the condo, so I would visit my grandpa every day. Um and he had just gotten into online banking and uh he was sort of like stalking my grandma with her purchases in south africa and i guess they hadn't like called yet because he's like what is going on with what she's buying and then finally they made contact and her luggage i don't think it was stolen but it was like lost and so she had nothing and she was buying like hilarious clothes when she brought them home my grandma's like barely five foot she has a head of hair like a dandelion you could blow like white afro-y type hairdo little british lady and she came home with these like massive t-shirts with elephants or white water bisons and just such a and she'd all like her usual outfits a kilt always a kilt so it was hilarious seeing her and all these African or South African clothes. Yeah, they had a good time. They, um, they were told they had to stay with the tour. They were like very much told not to leave the group. And one of their group members was a Russian lady who was like, oh, I grew up in rough parts of Russia. And, uh, like, she died. They killed, Someone killed her for her wedding ring on that trip. <laughs> so, I would, I don't know. I'm grateful for 
like documentaries and things now and the quality of cameras things so good that you can see countries without having to go one because traveling is so expensive and two you know I'm I I'm too old for excitement like that I don't need any more excitement I actually don't think she did another trip after that oh no I think they went to Alaska on a cruise but yeah that's that's too much excitement so it's already beginning of so my oldest starts grade two my youngest just graduated preschool so she starts kindergarten and so they both get on the bus now oh, so exciting actually it was crazy the last day of Stella's school I was about like just going outside to um, get it pick her up from the bus and I look over and we had a ladder outside I don't know my husband was doing something and I look and there's this bird on the ladder and I'm like you're not a wild bird this is gorgeous blue and I'm like oh boy so I like quickly ran inside and grabbed some unsalted sunflower seeds like without the shell and I sprinkled them everywhere and I ran to the bus to get Stella and then like told her I think there's a bird that's like escaped from its own like a domestic bird and uh, so I call what am I doing wrong here so I called like the SPCA and, and emailed them pictures and they're like oh yeah it's a budgie and where we live we're literally the first house of this one town but like all the houses because we're kind of like around farmland but all the like houses that are close together are in this other town like across the border like where we are it's all just farm so i called that town to be like i think i have like one of your residence birds here and they're like oh no but you're in this other town you need to call and tell them i'm like yeah but it's not someone around here's bird anyway so okay so i call them and they're like, oh, well, if you catch the bird, we'll come. But we're not going to come catch it. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Because we have, like, serious birds of prey where we are. And even just the little birds. Like, you've seen that one that just pecks at my window. You know, and there's this little domesticated budgie. It doesn't stand a chance. So I'm like, I got to catch this bird. And... I don't and oh yeah so the lady on the phone she's like do you have a net and I was like no nope so I get a laundry basket where I can see the holes are like probably a bird can't get through those holes but I don't know anything about birds like are they like mice can they just anyway so I'm carrying a towel around and a laundry basket and then it's so almost get him a couple times and he keeps get, getting away and then of course it starts to rain and I'm like oh my gosh this poor creature like luckily our house has it's like an old house and it's got I don't know there's places it can go under and then like I'm walking around I'm, I'm trying to do make all these bird noises I sound insane of course all these cheeping oh my god yeah and uh Stella's gotten bored quickly of this whole assignment and so I still have to make dinner I have to get ivy I like come back okay the bird's still on the roof or wherever I'm still going I'm still going and then I go inside I don't know if the girls have to have a bath or something and I come back outside and he's just it's been five hours at this point and he's just like sitting on the grass so I'm like yelling because of course when I look I don't have my towel or laundry basket supplies so I'm like yelling but telling everyone to like you know come quietly but oh my god hurry up and come and he's just sit like at that point it being five, five hours I'm pretty sure he was just giving up he was just like yeah come get me this is crazy so we get the laundry basket over him 
And then um, I suddenly realized the handles, like there's a big cut out there. And I'm like, oh my God, he's going to get out there. And so I'm yelling to Adam, like, we need something to put under because it's great. Now we have a laundry basket on it, on the grass. Like, now what type of thing? And so he quickly grabs something that's just nearby. And it's that, um, is it styrofoam? But there's, it's like tinfoil on the outside, like that metal shiny piece on the outside. And he has a piece of that. So he quickly grabs that and puts it under the laundry basket and starts to tape everything together, like tape up the handle holes and tape it all together. And then we're like, oh my God, if this bird like flies into this tape, like what's going to happen, right? And then, okay, so we have it like that. And then I go and I call and I'm like, okay, I've caught, I call the animal control. I'm like, okay, finally we've caught this budgie. And I had my phone on me that counts my steps and it was 7,000 steps for me to catch this budgie in five hours. <laughs> so, um, so I call and they're like, okay, we'll send someone out but probably like 10 p.m. they'll be there. So I didn't, and the temperature is starting to drop. So I'm like, okay, the budgie's got to come inside. So carefully bring them inside, like stuff more sunflower seeds because I don't have any other bird food and get some water and bring them inside and try to shoot them away from where the tape is. But okay, so that styrofoam stuff has that tin foil. So all you hear is like, like pitter patter, pitter patter. Like, oh my gosh, so we're just trying to chill for two hours. And this thing, like, he was sleeping too, but then, yeah. Anyway, so they finally came and they said they'd keep him there for like two weeks for the owners to come. And if the owners didn't come, they'd put him up for adoption. But I asked if they'd let me know, but I don't know if she was just telling me, like, oh yeah, okay. I'm not shaking this too much, but good deed of the day done there, which is nice. Good feeling. My mom used to have a budgie, but see, this is going back to my grandma. Like, I don't know how much of this story is true, but it's, I don't know if it's a good story either. When my mom had a budgie, I can't remember what its name was. It was like Maud or something like that. And, um, this is the olden days, as I like to say. And the budgie was like by the wall and their paint was lead. And apparently the budgie ate the tape off the wall and died. And my grandma says my mom gave the budgie mouth to mouth resuscitation. But my mom says that absolutely did not happen. So, you know, the story is a bit better. When you think a child has given a bird mouth to mouth resuscitation, but yeah, and my stepdad had a budgie too, so I'm just at that point where I can't look after any more creatures. I like gave chickens a thought and I was like, oh, not right now. Just I'm enjoying this amount of life at the moment. Yeah. Bees would be kind of cool too, actually. But someone told us, so there's a bee guy close to us where we get honey, that um, like if you have bee hives, you can almost like never eat outside because they hover around you and stuff like that. I feel like so many people have bees. How big is their property? Like how far away would you have to put beehives we also have the crop like we're surrounded by farm field we don't own that farm field um so the crop they've uh put in is corn it's my favorite it looks so good it, the noise is so dampened from cars and it's just it looks absolutely fantastic and i know it's corn for cows and i was like oh can you make popcorn out of this corn or is it like so GMO I might try taking the husk 
I'm seeing because the silks just started to grow. Is that what they're called? When it means like 20 days or something will be ready. Something like that. I don't know. But they never harvest everything. So there'll be so much corn. It'd be cool to try experimenting with them, but not if it's going to be disgusting. <laughs> We're having a big party get together soon. I was joking to make cornbread. Love cornbread. <clears throat> I think I'm going to make Jamaican beef patties for this barbecue actually because like the normal stuff too. Hot dogs and burgers and stuff like that but I made Jamaican beef patties last year. Oh my gosh. I love beef patties. And they are so naughty, I know, but if you make them homemade, somehow it makes things less naughty. Probably true, though. But yeah, the pastry is just like normal quiche or whatever pastry. You just add some curry powder for the color. And then the trick with the meat, it's like you follow the recipe, it's just like onions and beef with a ton of spices but to get the like right consistency you have to blend it and then add that mixture in because there's no chunky bits of beef at all so yeah I'm kind of craving it now so it's sort of a party for our, my husband's birthday and also we haven't gotten together in a while bunch of us went to my uncle's cottage at the beginning of July and it was so nice. He's got a good spot on a lake, a really nice view. And the kids, like, it's a great day when your kids literally sit in the truck on the way home and fall asleep in seconds. That is like goals. Exhaustion goals. The dog too. So, that was a good time. I have barely even wanted to leave to go anywhere. It's just so nice here at the moment, which is ideal. So, what are we at? Oh, yeah, I was, um, so last week Stella did, um, paddle, like, kayak camp thing, and I had this day where driving there there's like a turtle on the road there's so many turtles here and I drop her off and to like exit the it's like at an island lake park thing and then there's one little exit and of course like 40 geese decide to take their time crossing in front of me and then finally okay there and then it was time to walk the dog take blue for a walk and then the drive home there's just this little baby Bambi hopping around all silly middle of the road all over the place oh my gosh I thought it was a dog at first they're so small we had a ton of coyotes the other night howling away sometimes if you just hear one or two Blue will start barking, but that many, she was like, oh god. No, thank you. That was Ivy's fourth birthday. We had a bunch of her friends over, thinking it was going to be a gorgeous June day. And then, of course, it was raining, and I started to panic because it was like 15 kids a lot of boys I don't know what to do with boys inside I have girls so I like set up slime and all yeah just and luckily after like an hour an hour and 15 minutes um the rain stops so I, everyone outside time to swim go outside oh my gosh and also so for her party because when Stella turned for it was COVID and uh, we couldn't really have anyone over 
So I wanted to make a big deal and I got a pin, I made a pinata, this like, um, kind of had a Frito Cala, uni Frida Calo unicorn vibe going on. And it was awesome. It was like, I did it with the flower recipe, the flower and water newspaper, and it was like indestructible. It was really good. And then, so Ivy's turning four and I'm like, okay, well you have to have a pinata as well. So I thought a hot air balloon would be kind of cool. And I was going to do the glue um, method this time. And uh, so I get that, like, yep, glue, the outside's all done. And then it dries. It's like rock hard. And then the next day, the humidity level was like 80. And I had popped the balloon and like it was mushy. And I was like, oh my God. So it looked not hot, hot air balloony at all. And so I'm panicking because was it the day before? Yeah, it was the day before. So there's no time. I mean, I could have, but I was, I made her, Stella, you know, I committed to this idea. I was going to make a pinata. So I quickly make some, um, tissue paper flowers, hot glue gun, which is big poofy flower thing filled it with candy. And the kids are like, Oh my God, because it was still so mushy. You couldn't break it at all. The kids, it took, like, each kid got five or six turns. Like, so much. I think my husband had to, at the end, just impale it. But because the kids had hit this pinata for so long, they broke all the candy inside. They weren't that devastated, but I'm going to retire from making pinatas, I've decided. But, I mean, it was fun. I definitely laughed, so... I guess you can't ask for more than that. It is warm today. I am sweating. In my old age, I feel like I'm getting allergic to air conditioning, which is ridiculous. I know. And I always get a like stuffy nose and the filter is changed. So I don't know. I don't, I also don't want to turn on air conditioning because I want to feel this heat knowing we have it for like a month more. I want to like recharge my heat battery. You know what I mean? Okay, I'll do this. Uh, is it easier when I was just doing the block stitching? Where am I? Here. Okay. My um, Stella doesn't need heat at all, but Ivy. She's like skin and bone. She, oh yeah. She ended up getting a bad chest infection, I think, because she stayed in a wet bathing suit for too long. Anyways, anyways. I don't know what the reports for the winter are going to be like, but last year, it was very mild. So I'd take that again. Oh my gosh, I'm so confused where I am. Okay. All of this is like the bottom of her dress. So, all here. Oh yeah. So much to do still on her. And I still want to get her done by her 10 year anniversary. Okay, so that and down there. Right? So my, um, so Stella's at 3D camp right now and I wasn't even sure what that was. I just signed her up because her friend was going and it is like sculpture and choreograph, choreography, choreography, um, and dance and they're just swimming a lot. So. 
can't add, and this week is so much hotter. I'm so glad she's not at paddle camp. Having a repeat of our heat stroke camp adventures last year. No, thank you. I still haven't gotten that smell out of the car. Like if the sun hits wherever there is some dried vomit, the whole car reeks of vomit again. Yes, it's on the list to get detailed one day. One day. That's definitely a horrible smell. Oh, my dog smells so horrible at the moment. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, she was... Um, so, we had all this rain, nothing like Toronto. But we had a good amount of rain. And where our nature walk is, she... There's a, there's a creek or stream whatever river no it's tiny anyways and the dogs always go in just to cool down or whatever and uh so yeah it's just her routine to go into the stream but with all the rain the water level had gone up so much and the current was legit she got swept away i had like a new phone and my car keys and i just like threw them on the side like, my heart, I think, stopped. Like, or, I don't know, you know that feeling. And she's, like, gone. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then, like, I go down as far as I can without plunging in. And I see her, like, get over more to where the land was, like, 100 feet away. Oh, my gosh. And she came running through. And I was like, oh. If I had had to go to the bathroom, that would have happened. Like, that was not a nice feeling at all, but she seems fine. She's still going in the water, so she ain't scared. I guess she had it all under control, but oh my gosh. Because one time when we were in, my parents and I were in Costa Rica, there's like a t town you could go buy stuff and you'd have to wait for the water to go out to use the beach. And it only happened at specific times. And this one time, I guess we had taken too long, and so the water had come in a lot. And I, I don't know how old I was, six, seven? And I thought I could talk to the water and be like, don't wash us away, let us walk across. And I took like one leap, like eat, and I remember going. Like the current got me so quickly. And so my dad had to like lunge for me. And I guess when he was lunging for me, he stepped on all these rocks and he broke like his foot the bones underneath his foot his arch doing that oh my god and we had to, so to get back to the hotel um we had to go out really far into the ocean where it wasn't like a stream like a, a current you know what i mean because it was just chill out there and like walk around and we weren't in swimming clothes we'd spend a day in town and uh, yeah like all the my camera i'm not sure what happened but i know i was talking about um lunging into the water yeah so we had to go out into the ocean and walk pretty far out to swim around so the ocean out there wasn't like moving fast it was just chill so we could walk easily and we get back to the hotel room and my mom's put out all the money to dry out because it's all soaking which is wads and i forget what we had bought but we went in town to like buy everyone's gift remember you buy all those souvenirs and things and um <clears throat> all that i don't even know if we maybe it dried yeah i think there's some jewelry anyways hotel anyways our hotel room is just covered and we have to put do not like disturb not that we thought people would come in and steal all this money but there's just all the money lying out through the whole hotel room to dry out oh adventures gotta love them my dad was not too happy with me though my mom had just broken her foot the like september october the year before and um because she always wore like six inch stiletto heels and she like slipped and broke her ankle 
Um, so she had one of those walking cast thingies. So my dad just used that. I don't even think he went to the doctors because he was stubborn that way. But uh, yeah, he just hobbled around on that. My dad was like a very silent, wagey person. So yeah, he just, we didn't talk about it ever again, but it was made known. He's not impressed with hurting himself on a trip. Fair enough. That sucks. I feel like that was close to the end of the trip because, I mean, who wants to break their arm or, or catch a cold or something right at the beginning? That's horrible. So I did not try talking to the water ever again. And I have told my kids that story in hopes they don't try ever talking to water. I gotta be careful. It's crazy. So I'm glad both of them better at swimming. Makes life chiller knowing they can swim. Well, Ivy almost, but yeah. I mean, for how much energy this pool has burned, oh, I'm so grateful for it. I love being in the pool all the time, too. It's just... Yeah, it's just awesome. This is that little above you can't have. Well, I mean, yeah, sure. It'd be nice to have a huge pool, but not to do the upkeep. I don't know how, like, do I just not know how to make an hour, get the most out of an hour? I don't know how people have all this, like, stuff. Because you have stuff. You got to look after more stuff. It's crazy. All right. I am almost finished this. Fred. I had a friend actually who said it's best to know someone who has a pool and that is true. Then it's ideal, but we have a nice view. The only <laughs> I put my our compost right beside the pool, which is gross. I should not have done that. So we need to find a new spot for the compost. It's a bit stinky. And there's just a ton of bugs. I don't mind bugs, but yeah, when you're trying to chill in the pool, they're unnecessary. So I need a new spot for that. Okay, getting close. I blabbed on. It half it went halfway, so I don't even know how long I blabbed for. But yeah, I hope everyone or the southern hemisphere is having a good winter. Does it even get cold? It must get cold. Or is it where people are in the southern hemisphere? Is it just Englandy type temperatures for cold? Because where would it? I mean, you'd have to go pretty, pretty south for there to be snow, right? Or I don't know. Oh, and the Olympics are on. I have not watched any Olympics. I have not. So I don't know any of that that's going on either. Although I am curious about their opening show because I heard that was interesting. So I'm curious. Okay, so I have done 787 stitches. Thank you very much for keeping me company. And hopefully you got some stitching done too. Okay, until next time. Bye.